Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products in focus. So having a quick look at the US markets just to kick start off uh, today's session. Bullish engulfing pattern yesterday, but a failure to break through short term potential resistance around about 17,850. Um, we were in negative territory yesterday, only to finish up close uh, towards the high of the day, and then uh, we've not really followed through with that much conviction uh, this morning. But 17,747 seems to be a potential uh, kind of support level, you know, broken resistance now, switching to be potential support, uh, targeting potentially 18,111. And if we actually um, have a quick look to see how far we are from the all-time high, 2.72%. But we are in the background of um, a lot of world governments talking about monetary stimulus measures, quantitative easing, cutting rates, like over, they're talking about this over in Australia. Are the Australians likely to do it? How bad do things have to get before they do it again? Uh, and obviously all the other bits of feedback we've been having from, from China, where the data has been bad, but not quite bad enough to justify much in the way of additional action by the governments as of yet. So some markets might be just a little bit tepid, just moving forward, inching ever so slightly further forward uh, each session. So not a huge amount of volatility in some of the equity markets, as you can see, but um, I guess you still got a, a decent move there yesterday. But on the UK 100 in particular, it's really not looking as strong as the, uh, as the, as the US 30 from a technical chart perspective, um, with 64.15 being the potential resistance to watch out for. Uh, and we are trading above both moving averages. The other technicals are relatively neutral we did have a negative cross on the macd the other day but it's not really slowing down the uk 100 as of last night this level here at 6415 uh might be something to be wary of uh, albeit we did break above that historically last couple of sessions but this was a high from back in october so moving quickly on then to japan 225 uh, resistance seems to be firmly in place at 19,104. We're trading above both moving averages. The technicals, the slow stochastic is overbought. The RSI still has extra room to move. We are seeing a decline in the histogram and the MACD. Um, we've not got the crossover yet. So there seems to be a little bit of extra mileage to try and push through that 19,104 level. Um, but if it doesn't do it soon, you will begin to get uh, kind of divergence across some of these other technical indicators as well, which is add uh, to the technical pressure on the Japanese market. So then moving on to dollar yen, dollar yen seems to be getting back into boring mode again, which seems to be oscillating around about 120 spot 55, um, a similar pattern to what we saw throughout half of August and September and most of October. Um, not a huge amount of uh, volatility. You kind of say it's boring actually, that can be completely wrong dependent on the type of trader you are because if you're a swing trader, which means you're, you're uh, trading the ranges, uh, selling at the top and buying at the bottom, then actually dollar yen could be pretty interesting. So do keep an eye on the major support and resistance levels on there if it stays in that pattern for an extended period of time. So looking at West Texas crude, 45.85 has been the level for at least the last five sessions. Other technicals are getting to flatten out now maybe a little bit of stabilization, record oil production in, in, uh, in Russia. You do have crude oil inventories on Wednesday, and it was last Wednesday that caused this big spike up here because the inventory data came in a lot less than expected. So it'll be interesting to see what happens after that. So let's have a look at the yellow metal. Gold's getting um, a lot of negative sentiment at the moment because of those apart. It's kind of interesting because the reason why gold's going down, some people people would say, is because of the potential of uh, increased rates in the U.S. in December. But then we're not really seeing really dynamic moves on the U.S. dollar. Uh, and many commentators out there are still thinking that December is just a bit of a pipe dream. But non-farm payrolls is coming on Friday. Uh, I think if that figure comes in strong, that's going to give people a lot of extra fuel to that argument. Uh, if it's um, quite... If it's a kind of so-so, uh, then that raises a lot of eyebrows about, about the future. And then gold could be an interesting one to look at because this sell-off seems to be quite pronounced. So we're trading below both moving averages. Technicals has fallen off a cliff. We're below 11.38. Next potential support is uh, 10, well, basically 1,100. Uh, we are having our trading back up, back up to 11.38 right now. Uh, but this could be a strategic level as of today to have a look at. Okay. So moving on to euro dollar and GBP USD, euro dollar is uh, looking like it's kind of retracing back up to one spot 11, longer term potential support one spot 0786, 
This is what I was talking about, by the lack of strength in the US dollar after we had this uh, this kind of sudden move after the ECB was talking about quantitative easing. Um, but we're a little bit away from these levels at the moment. That's where we are with that. And then if we finish up there with GBP USD, uh, we had a little bit of a negative day yesterday. It finished bang on that level of one spot 54.24. And it'll be interesting to see uh, how that continues on today. Other technicals relatively neutral. We've almost got a bullish crossover on the moving averages as well. So economic data wise, not a huge amount today. We had some UK housing index data and uh, domestic auto industry sales. Wednesday brings a whole host of additional PMI uh, data from market serve. And then we have ADP private payrolls, trade balance, more PMI for the US, and of course those crude oil inventories. And don't forget about non-farm payrolls on Friday. If you want to sign up to our analyst debates webinar, go to support, then go live trader events and join Michael Hewson and Colin Trakinski um, as they talk about uh, the non-farm payrolls figure live as it happens the before and the after. So as ever guys, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your lay going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.